Capital gains tax for individuals. Here we have the tax framework again. It starts off with income, which is gross income less exempt income, and then deductions are deducted. Those are general and other deductions. And then you get your taxable income before the capital gain. And here you insert your taxable capital gain if there is any. And it must be inserted in here in the correct order. Then after that you deduct specific deductions, which is the retirement fund contributions and donations, and that gives you your taxable income. This is the framework for the calculation of the capital gain on the disposal of an asset. So you'll have your gross proceeds. From that you deduct your base cost. And then further you deduct any specific exclusions or rollovers. And that will give you the capital gain or loss for the asset. Calculating the aggregate capital gain. The capital gain and losses of all assets that were disposed of during the year of assessment must be calculated and added together. So for capital asset 1, there's a gain and a capital loss for asset 2 and again a capital gain for asset 3. You add them together and from there you will deduct your annual exclusion of 40,000 Rand for individuals. And that gives you your aggregate capital gain. Then you apply the 40% inclusion rate for individuals, which is 40%, and that will give you your taxable capital gain. The inclusion rate for companies is 80%. The proceeds must be the gross proceeds always. And that is made up of the net proceeds plus agents commission. So let's look at an example. I receive net proceeds of 1,410,000 Rand after 6% agents commission has been deducted. So the net proceeds represent 94% of the 100% of gross proceeds and the 94% is 1,410,000 Rand. The 6% agents commission is 6% and them added together gives you the gross proceeds of 100%. So we have to go calculate what the gross proceeds were. So you take the 1,410,000 Rand and you divide it by 94% then that will give you one and a half million rand, which is the gross proceeds. And the commission will then be the difference between the one and a half million rand and the one million four hundred and ten thousand rand, and that gives you ninety thousand rand. And the agent's commission will always be added to the base cost. You can also calculate the agent's commission as six percent times the one and a half million rand. The base cost. It's important to distinguish between assets that were purchased before 1 October 2001 and assets purchased on 1 October or after 1 October 2001. For assets purchased from 1 October 2001, the base cost consists of all the actual qualifying costs in purchasing or improving the asset. For assets purchased pre-1 October 2001, the valuation date value must be established, either in terms of paragraph 26 or 27 of the 8th schedule. The general rule is that the higher of the market value or the time apportionment base cost or the 20% rule can be used, but we will look at some exceptions. Base cost qualifying expenses. For assets purchased pre-1 October 2001, the expenses incurred, for example, can be repairs or improvements. They will be disallowed and have no impact because 
you will have to use the valuation date value, which will either be the market value, time apportionment, base cost, 20% rule, or other exception that we will look at. And for assets purchased on or after 1 October 2001, for example, repairs won't be an allowed base cost item. Improvements, however, will be allowed as qualifying expenses that will be added as part of the base cost. The base cost in terms of paragraph 26 for assets purchased before 1 October 2001. So there will be a profit on the sale because the proceeds will exceed the expenditure before, on and after 1 October 2001. Then the general rule is the valuation date value will be the higher of the time apportionment base cost, the market value or the 20% rule. So just an example there, the proceeds is one and a half million, which exceeds the base cost of a million and you have a capital gain. Next, we will have a look at the exception under paragraph 26. The exception under paragraph 26 is where the market value is greater than the proceeds. So you'll see the asset is purchased before 1 October 2001 for 100 Rand. The time apportionment base cost is 108 Rand and the proceeds when it was sold is 112 Rand. And the market value on 1 October was determined at 122 Rand. So you can see the market value of 122 is greater than the proceeds of 112 Rand. So paragraph 26 applies, but this is the exception because the market value exceeds the proceeds. So there is a profit situation, but the market value is 122 and the proceeds 112. So in this instance, the valuation date value is calculated as the proceeds less the cost incurred on or after 1 October 2001. So there were no costs incurred in this example on or after 1 October 2001. So the valuation date value is calculated as 112 minus 0. That equals 112. And the base cost in terms of paragraph 27 for assets purchased before 1 October 2001. So paragraph 27, this is where there's a loss on the sale. The proceeds are less than the expenditure before, on and after 1 October 2001. Then there are four scenarios. Okay, the first instance where no market value was determined. The valuation date value is equal to the time apportionment base cost. Then secondly, where the cost before 1 October 2001, let's say it was 100 Rand, is greater than or equal to the proceeds, let's say it's 90 Rand, so you can see there's a loss. And the cost before 1 October 2001 is greater than the market value, let's say it's 85 Rand. Then the valuation date value will be the highest of the market value, which is 85 Rand, or the proceeds less the cost on or after 1 October 2001. In this case, there was no cost on or after 1 October 2001, so it will be 90 minus 0, so 90 then will be the valuation date value. The third instance is a cost before 1 October 2001 is 100, is greater or equal to the proceeds, and that's only 45, so you see there's another loss situation, and it's smaller than the market value. So the cost before 1 October 2001 is smaller than the market value of 150, then the valuation date value will be the lower of the market value of 150 or the time apportionment base cost. 
So here we gave the time apportionment base cost as 75, so 75 will then be used as it is lower. Where there were no records kept of any costs, the valuation date value will be based on the 20% rule. Qualifying expenses that form part of the base cost. You get your gross proceeds, then you deduct your base cost, and it consists of your valuation date value if the asset was acquired before 1 October 2001. And then there are also qualifying expenses that were incurred on or after 1 October 2001. So for assets that were purchased on or after 1 October 2001, there won't be a valuation date value. There will only be qualifying expenses. So let's have a look at what they could consist of. It can be the cost to acquire or dispose of an asset, advertising to find a seller or a buyer, legal fees, transfer costs, etc., valuation fees, improvements that were incurred by the taxpayer, legal fees paid to defend the legal title, agents commission, and so on. So we've looked at proceeds and base cost of assets. Now we're going to have a look at some exclusions available to individuals. First one is a primary residence exclusion of 2 million Rand. So the first 2 million Rand of a capital gain on the primary residence is excluded. Anything above 2 million Rand capital gain will be subject to capital gains tax. And also primary residences, that's proceeds or 2 million Rand or less will be disregarded. But if any portion of a primary residence is used other than a primary residence, for instance, it has been rented out or a portion has been used for business purposes, then an apportionment must be made for the number of months that it was not used as a primary residence. So then it was rented out or used for business purposes. And that number of months it was used otherwise as a primary residence in relation to the total number of months the taxpayer owned the primary residence that portion will be subject to capital gains tax, as well as the percentage that was used for business purposes. Then each person is entitled to a proportional exclusion. For example, if two spouses own a primary resident equally, each of them will get 1 million Rand primary residence exclusion. Then there's another exception where a taxpayer is deemed to be ordinary resident in a primary residence for two years where the person did not actually reside in the residence because the taxpayer was busy trying to sell that primary residence. So for two years he couldn't sell it or the erection of a residence, the taxpayer purchased a piece of land and started erecting a primary residence on there and the resident or the residence was accidentally rendered uninhabitable so through a natural disaster like flooding or so or the death of the taxpayer so in these instances the taxpayer is deemed to have lived in that primary residence for two years but if it exceeds two years, say for instance three years, then that third year will not qualify for the two million rand primary residence exclusion. Then another instance is where a residence has been let out for five years. If the following conditions are met, the taxpayer will be deemed to have lived in that primary residence. So the person must first of all have been living in that residence one year before and one year after that five year period. And 
no other primary residence must have been owned by the taxpayer and the taxpayer must also be temporarily absent from South Africa or employed more than 250 kilometers away from that primary residence. So if all those requirements <clears throat> are met, then the taxpayer would, have, would be deemed to have lived in that primary residence for five years. But if the period exceeds five years, then there is no exclusion whatsoever in relation to that period. Then there's a maximum of two hectares of land that qualify for that primary residence exclusion. So anything above the two hectares of land will not qualify for that primary residence exclusion. Then there are personal use assets that are excluded. For instance, uh, aircraft 450 kilograms or less, uh, about 10 meters or less. Some personal use assets are not excluded. Gold coins, platinum coins. And then there's the small business exclusion of 1.8 million rand. If the following requirements are met, must be a natural person and he or she must have a 10% interest in a small business for five years. And the active business assets must not exceed 10 million rand. And the person must have been substantially involved in the business for five years. And the person must be 55 years or older. Or it must be due to ill health or death. Then the person can receive a 1.8 million rand exclusion. Some further exclusions are retirement benefits. They are taxed separately, long-term insurance payments and compensation for personal injury, illness or defamation, then gambling proceeds and then there's the annual exclusion for natural persons of 40,000 Rand. Then there are rollovers for natural persons. We're just looking at the disposal between spouses that's rolled over. So whatever the base cost was for the one spouse disposing to the other spouse, the other receiving spouse will have the same base cost as the disposing spouse. And then lastly, the assessed capital loss that's brought forward from the previous year of assessment that must also be taken into account as a last item. Well, that concludes the capital gains tax presentation. Thank you.